in the back corner <laughs> when I'm not presenting. Listening in. And listen in. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Bash University Live here on Tuesday night. Take a quick break. Watch John Cruz's on the Tokyo rig. Be a part of the show. Get some chances to win some awesome prizes. As fast you go. You know, we didn't have that back then. And, 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 dude, it, it can just... That text thread gives me so much energy. I mean, like I'm dialing. And welcome, welcome to live. Uh, how's everybody doing? Welcome to Bash You Live. Um, it's what a great show we've got. Uh, really excited about this longtime friend of mine, couple of longtime friends of mine. B Height is coming on the Jack Hammer Hammer, uh, the man that that had a hand in in designing the Jack Hammer and has uh, played a big role in revolutionizing how we catch fish with that bait with that tool he's a master at it he's won a ton with it uh you know won over a couple million dollars in fishing won on both the Bassmaster, and now he's fishing over at the major league fishing side and he's won five times over there it's uh it's going to be great to have them they're out on the water today him and uh jared littner so they're going to be joining us here shortly and we're going to be diving into the jackhammer you know diving into techniques how things have changed and morphed over the years uh, when we first started fishing it to to how we're triggering strikes now and the you know everything from trailers to actions weights lines and 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 what the latest and greatest on this amazing tool is because we've got a couple of aficionados in-house here that uh can't get that bait out of our hand so gonna be a lot of fun but we've got uh we've got giveaways as always we've got a great like and share contest going on we're uh, we're going to be giving away a great set of Waterwood custom baits, Jocelyn. So if you're watching us over on social, like and share the feed, and we will uh, put you in a contest to win that prize. And we also have a trivia prize, Joss. What do we got for that today? We're giving away some Bass U rod sleeves. Awesome. From Rod War USA. We have our... Love these. They float. <laughs> they do? Yes. That's very cool. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Good stuff. Um, we also have a bash you hat, bash you sticker, bash you face shield. So we're bash you fitting you. <laughs> yes, that's good. I, I love things that float. As you know, I need them. And uh, <laughs> as you know, as everybody knows, I have I, I have a, I just received my brand new Hank Cherry uh, custom floating Hobie glasses. I'm very excited to be using these. I've got the Sightmaster Plus as well as the reflective uh green lens uh which i don't know the exact name they call that but i will get that for you before you end. it's on the box actually is it on the box well yeah. now you're gonna make well, me read it off the your... box <laughs> oh my goodness they're like the mojo float uh on the side there you go. mojo float there it is satin black with the green mirror lens well that's what yep. i said green mirror lens which i use in the brighter light conditions and uh, and then of course I use the Sightmaster Plus when anytime I need to sight fish or low light conditions, uh, and they both float, so that will help me a Frank? lot this year. Frank would like to know: Does Pete float? <laughs> uh, like a cork, yeah. apparently. <laughs> um, <laughs> I like do. I do. I just. <laughs> I uh, I have no problem there. I'm, I'm a good swimmer, thankfully. Well, I, I could just imagine you being like um, when you teach a kid how to swim, they just like push them in and then they have to like roll on their back. And yeah, float. yeah. Like, could you imagine if you just like rolled and went floating down the Chesapeake? I know. I should have. <laughs> you should have. I should have just gone for a swim or, you know. <laughs> yeah, started doing the backstroke. Just really, really embrace it. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. just no, soaked cool, it all man. in. I was just hot. Yeah. <laughs> I meant to do that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 I, I love it. But there's so much going on, guys. If you yeah, have yeah. not subscribed to Bass University, get on it. Right now is the time. It's fishing season. It starts in Florida. It's already 
jumping down there in, in Georgia, Alabama, Texas. Things are rocking and rolling, and it's going to sweep the old Bass Belt up north. And uh, it's a great time uh, to subscribe to Bass University. Our Seeing Red promotion is hot right now. As a matter of fact, we are giving away a jackhammer. We are giving away missile baits trailer. It's a, it's our Seeing Red promotion. And also a DT6 in demon color uh, as part of your subscription to Bass University TV, as well as a Lakewood uh, tackle bag. All that's bad. What's that value that's got? $75? Oh, yeah. The whole package. $75. Yeah. Yep. Uh, for an annual subscriber. And, of course, uh, you can check it out for 30 days free right now over at Bashy.tv. If you haven't subscribed, go there now because we take all our questions from the IM board. And you can watch us at the free Bashy app. Get that downloaded. If you haven't done that yet, you're going to love the Bashy app. It makes it a lot of fun and easy to watch Bash University TV and participate in the live show. So, um, all that stuff's going on at Bashy. We, uh, Riz, you're just down in Florida, uh, down at the uh, Okeechobee Elite Tournament. Uh, that was a pretty amazing event. Yeah, it really was. Um, we were down there, set up at the expo, got to meet and talk with some amazing people, signed some more people up for the program. Um, everybody that signed up down there, stop by my booth. Thank you for coming to hang out with me for a bit and chatting. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the program so far, but that really was a, a pretty incredible tournament, Pete, because we're seeing fish get caught now that otherwise never would have been found. And Tyler Rivette did a masterful job at doing that. Um, you know, put the technology that he has at his fingertips to, to work, to really win a tournament in a fashion that Every, nobody thought was possible. Everybody missed it. I, everybody missed it. I mean, Davey Height and Mark Zona and Ronnie Moore, they were pulling their hair out trying to <laughs> imagine how this yeah. how this was was going down and happening. And it really was uh, an incredible, incredible performance by him. I mean, also, you know, there was a lot of really impressive stuff done at that tournament. Steve Kennedy had himself a great derby on a frog, frog fishing, catching big fish on a frog three days anybody, in a row. Nothing but if frog anybody's fish. on the board watching on Bash TV or Facebook. Um, if anybody knows what kind of frog that was that he was on, I couldn't I couldn't tell on live, but I want to know because Pete, that frog was humping some water when he was moving that thing. I mean, just hoo, 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 making a really making good. a you know, it, it's awkward as awkward as he is on stage. That frog was awkward coming through the pads. He but had dude, an it, a, un, we, unusual like rhythm. Yeah, he was it, making that thing move. It, it was, was crazy. It was erratic. It was pushing water. It was. I mean, I want to know what kind of frog that was. So if anybody it looked like knows, a, it looked like a spro. It looked black on black it? spro to me. It, but I, I didn't. Thought it was too. I thought it was too bulbous. Too big. Like, too fat to too, be too to, bulbous. To be a spro. Or, or maybe uh -huh. he had it weighted so that it would push more water. I I don't know. But anyway, that was that was incredible. I, our boys, uh, Ike and Greg, they both made the cut. Had Outstate. themselves had a, had, a, had a good tournament. Great Mike, way to start the year. Yeah, Mike had himself an awesome day one, brought mm -hmm. in almost 20 pounds. Greg had a little bit of a more mediocre day two, but then jumped himself up or on day one, but then jumped himself up on day two. Happy to see those guys uh, out there doing well. And, you know, just a lot of awesome performances. Brand, I mean, Brandon Cobb, he caught 32 pounds. Yeah. 32 pounds, Pete. Yeah, absolutely. That was it. absolute insanity. And a, and, and a jackhammer chatterbait vibrating jig played a big role in, in all of that. It, weight, is, it is hard to beat a, a jackhammer right now. And gosh, they are biting it in Florida. I wish I was down there throwing it. But <laughs> luckily, luckily, we get to talk to uh we get to talk to the, the man hammer hammer himself. Yes, yeah. so it's gonna be awesome. Yes, sir. And and so much other activity going on. That was we were at the Bassmasters, uh, like we usually are, and we'll be uh we'll be in Texas, we'll be in a lot of places. Make sure you stop by and see the Bash University tent uh whenever you're at the Bassmaster events but there was a lot going on uh, there and they're of course at Seminole which I'm excited about because Mike has won at Seminole before and uh excited to see him back there but Major League Fishing was very active too they had a uh, a great Okeechobee event where B Height took third place um you know just jackhammering away down there like he does uh coming close to winning that event and he had another great event up at Toho but the Toho event was absolutely spectacular. We are going to have um, 
Chris Lane with us next week on the show to talk about that Sweet. because he had uh, uh, arguably the greatest uh, last minute fish catch of all time. That's a bold statement, but man, if you didn't see it, you got to go check it out. We're going to, we're going to play that clip uh, next week uh, when he's on and talk about it, but it was truly amazing. I think he needed like a, a 412 or 410 or something. Uh, and he got a five, five. I think that's how it rolled out. I might mm -hmm. have the weights wrong, but anyway, he, he, he needed a really, really big fish to win and overtake Mark Davis who had 34, 10 on day one of, of mm. the qualifying and, uh, um, and, you know, struggled mightily, you know, with a 15 pound back and opened the door for Chris. And it came down to the very last minute, 30 seconds left on the clock when, uh, Chris brings the five pounder in the boat just enough to overtake Mark Davis. So, uh, oh man, so awesome to see live in action, all this bass fishing in action. That's right. It's so hard to get work done. Yeah. Baby, it's it, time, to, time it is. to break those cash and rods out and put them to work. It is back. It is back, baby. Mm -hmm. So pay attention. We're going to be diving in deep on the chatterbait. Get your questions together. What do you want to talk about? What, what questions might you have for, Brett about his trailers, his techniques. We're going to be asking him a ton. So we want to hear from you guys too. Uh, get your questions over on the IM board and we'll pass them along to Brett or Jared. And, um, and we'll see if they catch any fish. They're, they're actually on the water. So and pay attention because we're going to be asking you a question based on what we talk about today and giving away our, uh, our mega uh, Bash University uh, package for, uh, for the trivia winner today. So uh, we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to be right back with the Jack Hammer Hammer himself. Be hype. We'll be right back after this. What's going on? It's Riz here from the Bash University, and I am excited to welcome in Waterwood Custom Baits to the Bash U family. These are custom handmade baits in the south rainforest of Brazil. They're made of Marupa Pedra wood. It's extremely dense. It's resistant, but it's also really buoyant. They're made of quality components with a 100% guarantee. They're made for tournament anglers to get it done when the money is on the line. Guys, that was like my second cast with this bait. That's a Waterwood custom bait. These things are handmade in the rainforest south of Brazil. And I mean, as you can see right here, it's a fish catching bait. It's got the front hook. That means they wanted it. This bait's, uh, it, it's running really true. It throws really well. Guys, check them out at waterwoodcustombaits.com. underwater viewing technology. Find what you are looking for. Catch more fish. Have more fun. Aquaview. Seeing is believing. Why do you love catching fish and rods? I'm truly losing less fish. Is the sensitivity of the rod. That's are made right here in North Carolina in the USA. Strongest, lightest rod. 100% made here in Sanford, North Carolina. From the drop shot rod to the flipping stick. Every rod has a purpose to it, and I rely on them all the time when I'm out there in a tournament. Durability in the John Cruz Worming Series, the counterbalancing in the handle. It's the only rod I've found that can withstand my hook set. Boom, goes the dynamite. On the water, not spent fishing is a moment wasted. That's why Minn Kota and Humminbird have joined forces to bring you the One Boat Network, products that communicate and integrate to help you take full command of your boat. Born from our commitment to making the most advanced fishing gear even better by making it work together, the One Boat Network will help you find, get to, stay on, 
and catch more fish. When One Boat Network products talk to each other, they can navigate your boat automatically. They can give you a crystal clear view of what's below with no messy wires. And they can let you lower, raise, and change shallow water anchor modes from anywhere on the boat. But that's just the beginning. We're never done innovating, integrating, and making your boat simpler and easier to control. All so you can make every second on the water count. Welcome back to Bass University Live. Glad to have you with us. Once again, we got B Height coming on uh, with Jared Littner, too, and uh, they're out fishing today. So glad they could take some time and, uh, and visit with us. We're going to be diving in with the Jack Hammer Hammer uh, and talking about that bait, which we all love to throw so much. Uh, without further ado, I see him there. Uh, B Height, you've won over a couple million. You've won on both the Bassmasters and now at Major League Fishing. Uh, you're just a killer and you, you're a designer of the jackhammer. And so, so a good friend of mine, we've been traveling together, even through my Tourette syndrome. And I appreciate you always putting up with me, but, uh, it's great to have you on the show, buddy. How you doing? I'm good. Thanks guys for having me. Uh, looking forward to a good show. Uh, where, where are you? I mean, we're used to talking to somebody sitting in front of their computer, but man, you, I like your background a lot better. Yeah, we're uh, we're on the Lake X in Georgia. I can't tell you where it is. I, I was sworn to secrecy, but uh, had some uh, while I was on uh, in the waiting room. I actually caught a three and a half four pounder on the jackhammer. Did you really? Yep, yep. See, all you guys had to do was just ask, and it, it happened. <laughs> that's that's awesome. That's all that thing does is catch fish, man. <laughs> yeah, big ones too, <laughs> especially in your hands. You know, um, <laughs> sometimes you're, you're out in the boat with Jared Littner and who else is in the boat with you today? Let's see here. Let's go ahead. Jordan Collins. <laughs> Jordan Collins and Jared Littner. Jordan's hey. fishing his first rookie season on uh, the Tackle Warehouse Invitationals. So we're just hanging out at, uh, at Littner's house, getting ready for Clark's Hill. Practice starts Friday over there. Clark's Hill. Well, that ought to be, uh, you ought to be hitting that stuff chatterbait season right yeah it should be a good pre-spawn bite you know it's it's warm out here it's supposed to be warm all week you know where we're fishing right now water temperature is like 55 so just a good pre-spawn bite and looking forward to that event yeah no doubt well you came off a, a great event um down at uh down at okeechobee you took uh you had a third place at the first invitational and uh i know they had the camera with you and of course Man, you're you're just amazing. I mean, you were one of the pioneers of getting this thing done with that bait in uh, down in Florida, and uh, and you did it again, man. You you came close to winning another one. Yeah, it was uh, it really set up good at Okeechobee and at uh, at Toho Kissimmee Chain. You know, the fish were you know doing their thing. You know, some were spawning, some were post spawn, some were pre spawn, and. Um, when you get that good aquatic vegetation and everything's right, you get the right water color and, um, you know, the stars line up and they, they can't resist that thing. Well, I got to tell you a story about when I first got it. I don't know if you ever heard my story about the, the chatterbait, the OG, the one, an outdoor writer gave me three of them. Um, and he said, man, you should, you got to try this bait, Pete. When it first came out, like we were somewhere at a writer event and, and the guy that I was fishing with caught him like it's amazing. And I looked at it and I'm like, there's no weed guard on it. It's got a dumb blade on the front. This thing is stupid. And I put it in my boat and there it sat for more than a year before, before I threw it. Uh, that was a, a huge faux pas by me. What, ha what, how did you get introduced to it? Were you at the cutting edge of this thing? Um, no, actually, I mean, I saw it when it first came out and uh, Brian thrift one on Okeechobee you know yep. when it first came out and i bought a couple and i kind of thought the same thing you did you know it they everybody always rigged it with like a little almost like a little spinner bait trailer like a little twin tail uh real skinny little trailer and um just never had any confidence in it and i actually went with a buddy of mine to clear lake uh in the summertime they were biting so good and he's like man you should pick up that chatterbait and catch a couple i'm like man i've never caught anything on it well, needless to say, I caught a couple, and then later that year at uh, 
Clear Lake. I I was introduced to the Phoenix vibrating jig first, um, and uh, started right. using that, and then uh, ended up switching up and putting more of a swim bait style t trailer on it mm -hmm. to kind of give it that bigger profile, and I, it's just really taken off now. Everybody's using kind of a um, more, more more. Oh my gosh, we got a giant one, guys. Get out of here, out real quick. We got a giant one on a slide swimmer. What? guys see it oh, oh, it's not giant but it's it's <laughs> it's like a four pounder though <laughs> i love it sorry sorry we 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 got we get got a little uh, excited there but uh yeah that was pretty cool that what, what are you guys fishing out there today are you fishing swim baits what are you guys fishing yeah we're fishing jackhammers and swim baits and of course jared's got the drop shot he's just trying to get the numbers you know but <laughs> uh yeah so you know now you see most everybody's using kind of a swim bait a bigger profile trailer on uh on their bladed jigs and that's kind of how it got started and um and then of course i went to uh later that next year earlier that next year i uh uh went to toho and won the flw tour event and then drove to the cal delta in one there in two weeks, won $250,000. So that's kind of what it all started. And then, um, you know, uh, Chatterbait uh, got the patent on the actual Chatterbait. And uh, I'll, I'll kind of give you the background on it. So they were, <clears throat> you know, they pretty much put a cease and desist on everybody, which, I mean, you would too if you had that patent. And sure. uh Marizo and I, who was the other helping designer of the Marizo Shimuzu, was the Bassmaster Elite Champion. You guys all know Marizo, Big Mama. Big Mama. Uh, him and I, yeah, him and I went to Evergreen and decided to make, design the, the jackhammer. And we were just going to make it as a, a JDM only bait, you know, just so we could use it. And at Winyaw Bay, I got second on it and kind of let the cat out of the bag and I got a call from from Daniel at Z-Man, the president of Z-Man, and he's like, hey, uh, you, you can't really promote a bait that uh, infringes on the patent in the U.S. And I'm like, oh, man, I'm sorry. I had no idea. He's like, well, since you guys did all the legwork and everything and you got the molds already made, why don't why don't we uh, team up with Evergreen? And uh, it's just been a great partnership between the two, between Z-Man and Evergreen. And the rest is history. That's all. That's awesome story. Tell me this. What, uh, what's the difference? Like what design features are in the jackhammer that separate it from you know, like the, the, the OG chatterbait? Yeah. I mean, I, what I was always looking for was a high end, uh, real high quality, like JDM design style, uh, uh, chatterbait. And, uh, you know, it has the Gamagatsu pretty much their, medium heavy wire flipping hook in it which is like a wide gap o'shaughnessy bend flipping hook um it has a good trailer keeper on it double trailer keeper hand tied skirt was a was a big part of it um, because you're always slapping the grass off of it yep. and you you just don't want that skirt to fall apart and then uh another big thing is the stainless steel blade and that uh the way it hits the head and you can make that stainless a little bit thinner than you can like a, a pot metal or tin and uh it actually vibrates harder and then putting a good uh double snapping o-ring or uh snap on it um there was just a lot of little little perfections that we wanted to make uh make the mouse trap a little bit better and uh we i think we accomplished that with it and, and the other thing was, uh, for me, is you would get a regular chatterbait, and one, one time you'd get one and it vibrated really hard, and then the next time you'd get one, it wouldn't vibrate as hard. So um, each jackhammer is very, very consistent on how they run and how they vibrate. And, uh, you know, I just hated when you had a really good one and you'd either break it off or something would happen to it, and then you'd pick out a, a, a either a different brand or something like that you tie that one on and it wouldn't vibrate as good so we did a lot of a lot of testing on geometry and stuff i can't tell you all the secrets but uh, uh just so that it vibrates as soon as you start turning the the handle 
Um, right. I mean, as you guys know, I mean, you don't have to twitch it to get it to go or anything like that. It's as soon as you start turning the handle, that thing's vibrating. Well, it's the one everybody has to have. By the way, uh, subscribe to Bash U, and you get a jackhammer right now with an annual subscription. We got a cool seeing red promotion going on. Uh, where we're... I, I'll even sign up for a free jackhammer. <laughs> get your own royalties off. That's that. yeah. Put money back yeah. in your own pocket. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's and and you know we've come out with the right colors and. Um, you know, now we got, we got four different sizes, three eighths, half, three quarter, an ounce and a quarter, um, for pretty much any, any, uh, water level or, or how, however deep you want to fish that thing. So, um, go ahead. Speaking of Aaron would like to know with colors, do you have a go-to color to start on a new body of water natural lakes? Yeah. If I really don't know what I'm going to use is actually the bait. I just caught a four pounder on. Um, and that's green pumpkin shad. Um, it's <laughs> has green pumpkin on the top and kind of a shad belly on the bottom with a green pumpkin blade. Nice. And what I like about that bait is you can put a green pumpkin trailer on it, or you could put a shad trailer on it and it works, it works good with either one. Um, so it, it's just a good all around kind of starting point instead of cutting it off and putting it putting a green pumpkin on or putting a shad on you can just literally change the yamamoto zako trailer out and uh you know put a green pumpkin one if you want it to really look more like a, a bluegill or brim or something like that or you know put the a shad one on there and uh it'll look like a bait fish the we're we're giving away the fire crawl as part because it's a seeing red promotion and that oh, yeah. that bait is a killer uh, I, I've, I find it like in the spring and a lot of times a year, uh, did, have you, do is that a color you, uh, feel good about? I know like in Texas, it's real popular, but do you use that color a lot? I, I do. Yeah. Cold, muddy water, pre-spawn. I mean, that thing is, uh, it's tough to beat, you know, I mean, it's pretty aggressive looking color. So, I mean, it, <laughs> like today this lake's pretty clear. It's not something you'd be throwing today, but. Um, you get up and and where there's those fish are moving up and that that little bit more stained water and you know of course red is always always really good in the springtime pre-spawn and man that thing catches some giant giant bags. What do you got, Josh? Uh, Jonathan wants to know if you can describe what's the difference between the clear and the stainless steel chatter. Yeah, so the the clear blade is called the stealth blade, uh, and we we came out with that just to. Um, like, let's say I'll give you a scenario where you go through a stretch and you catch five or six on, a, uh, the OG jackhammer, and then you come back, um, through with that clear blade, which is, uh, it's just a lot more subtle. It doesn't vibrate as hard. It's, it has a tighter wobble to it. It's just uh, a little bit more finessey. And a lot of time I'll pick up a couple more bites that I would not have gotten with that thing. Or if you're fishing a uh, clear body water, you know, that are fish are a little bit more uh, uh, pressured or, uh, you know, they can just see the bait a little bit better. And it likes a little bit skinnier trailer like our new, uh, we make a, Yamamoto's making a Yamamoto uh, three inch Zocco um, that you can put on there, just downsize everything on it and even go to a little bit lighter line. I, I, I throw it on like 14 or 16 pound FC Sniper Sunline fluorocarbon instead of uh 20 is what i normally throw my uh og jackhammer on does that three inch zako have a uh it, you said it's got a thinner profile too it is yeah it's it's just a little it's just downsized the whole right. thing and, right. and that's good for another bait that i've been throwing uh that z-man makes is that mini max you know yeah. <laughs> kind of a little Love bit uh, more finesse style uh uh chatter bait and that mini max with that three inch shaco just it, it fits perfect all right yeah that's a that's a hot little bait and uh we've all played around with that a little bit the uh you know when when the chatter bait first came out when i first started throwing it i'm down in i'm down in florida uh thrift has already won a million dollars and i'm late to the party but we were um I was throwing it on braid, right, with a medium heavy action, and the vibration was crazy, crazy good. And um, things have changed a lot, right? You that that is no way the the 
the way you should be throwing it now. And I notice, man, you well, you're all set up. What what is the setup uh, to to be throwing this bait and catching catching fish consistently? So so the biggest misconception with the bait is when somebody looks at it, just like you did, you thought you look at it and you think it's a jig, which mm-hmm. I mean it has a jig head on it, but. Um, so what the, what, what people do wrong right off the bat is they put it on their jig rod, you know, medium, heavy graphite rod, something that's what, what we would call a, uh, a fast action. That's what I and, do. And really you got to think of the chatterbait more like a, uh, like a crankbait. So my setup is a seven, three heavy action, evergreen combat series stick. And it's a, it's a glass composite rod. Um, so it, it has a lot of power to it, but it ha- it's very, very parabolic. So um, when you when you get those bites, um, you act, the, the bait actually gets sucked in the fish's mouth since that rod is more like a, uh, like a rubber band. And then um, when you set the hook, the whole rod bows and loads up and allows you when, a lot of time, as you know, Pete, the fish are coming towards you with that thing a lot, especially right. the big one. And with that big bow and that rod, it works like a big rubber band, so you don't get slack in your line. Um, so, so the rod, it you know, even when he's coming towards you, the rod can lessen the bow a little bit, but it still has tension on the line because you have so much bow in that rod. What line are you throwing the jackhammer on? I throw the OG on a 20 pound FC Sniper Sunline fluorocarbon, oh, okay. and then the reel I'm, I'm throwing is just a. It's a Daiwa Tatula Elite. Uh, I like a 6.3 gear ratio. Um, you can either speed it up or slow it down depending on your water conditions and water water nice. temperature. So just kind of a mid-range, mid-range uh, gear ratio. And uh, I just like that reel because it's, it's truly a workhorse. You, I mean, I make thousands of casts a day with that thing when, 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 it's, when it's going and that, that reel just powers through it. Strap a chatterbait to its back and let it eat. Let her let her roll. <laughs> yep. I well, when I first started throwing it too, I mean, it was geez, I mean, we must have had five years of man, you just throw it out there and wind it in. And everything, it was just I would take out customers and we could just put it on and just chunk it and reel it in, you'll catch them. Um, it seems like you, you know techniques my technique has changed dramatically like in order to trigger strikes i've had to get more creative and do a lot of different things with it uh because a lot of the fishing pressure how has your technique changed over the years what what are some of the triggering uh techniques you're using now yeah i mean the biggest thing with that i mean especially if you're fishing aquatic vegetation where it probably shines the best out of anywhere i mean it it works anywhere that uh that you would throw a spinner bait, but uh, aquatic vegetation is really where it shines. And you know, when the, the biggest key is to get that bait to where it just bumps that grass. And a lot of time when it bumps that grass and um, I'll twitch the rod after it comes through that grass and that's when it gets that real crazy erratic action and that, that triggers the strike. So it's just like a crankbait, you know, very seldom do you wind a crankbait around just over open water, it usually has to hit something and deflect. Um, and that's really what triggers those strikes. So when, when all, when the, when the stars align and, um, you know, even when there's a lot of pressure, you can, um, get those fish to trigger by, um, actually hitting that grass. And, uh, there's a happy median about getting it too deep in the grass and then getting it clogged up or, or, you know, winding around and just ticking that grass and, every once in a while it hits it really, really hard. And that's usually when, when you get, uh, trigger those bites. When you rip it out, do you, are, uh, like sometimes I find if I rip it out too hard, I'm missing opportunities. I've got to find a way to kind of feather it through the grass a little bit. Yeah. Mine's more like a, just kind of a pop pop with the, uh, with the rod tip. You know, I mean, if you rip it too hard, then you pulled it past that strike zone, which you just, um, you know, you kind of woke them up when you hit that grass. But if you rip it too hard, then you're you're uh, you're pulling it past that strike zone. So that's why I I never throw it on braid. You know, there's a bunch of guys, you know, there's um, but 
a 20 pound FC sniper fluorocarbon day in and day out with, with that setup. Uh, you know, I probably, I, at, at Okeechobee, I think I only lost one fish on it and it was not a big one. I mean, my ratio on, on, uh, on actual landing the fish with that setup is really, really good. I've noticed that the, um, it seems like from like month to month, week to week, even really day to day, like the way you have to work the bait through the grass will like, there's some days where like when you get it hung up in the grass and you hit it and make it get crazy, the harder you hit it, the harder they're going to bite it. And then sure. there's other days where like when you feel the grass, you slowly have to kind of just lift and let it fall down to the other side, like depending on the mood of the fish, right? Sure. The, the, beauty, yep. the beauty of that bait is that you can make it do so many different things on the exact, you don't have to change anything. You can manipulate the bait to make it either rise up. You can make it get loose left and right. You can make it get to the bottom. It's from a versatility standpoint, it's there, there's not many baits that you can do as much with uh, as you can a chatter bait. And I think partly that's why it, it's been so effective yep. over <laughs> yeah. the inception. For and, sure. and, and just so you know, Brett, uh, Rich, uh, who was just speaking is, is probably responsible for your last 10 mortgage payments. <laughs> Uh, by, by, by I'll, I'll give collection. the dogs an extra treat when I get home. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, he, he's definitely got to be in the five figures on Chatterbait. Uh, <laughs> we we all love it here because we yeah. we fish around the Chesapeake a lot, and it's all sure. milfoil and eel grass, and it that bait was just designed to fish down there. So yeah, yeah, you guys are in the in the the northern zone for it for sure. You know uh potomac chest peak i mean that's 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 just chatterbait heaven around there it, it it sure is and uh we're almost there we just got through some ice so uh it won't be too long and, <laughs> and, so. and we'll be no, it's not far off man. It, it's you, not because it, it, beauty about the chatterbait it doesn't have to just be straight grass either it can be pad nope. stems mm -hmm. it can be and rip wrap it can be be, be bank grass it, it's mm. everything yeah. Works, yeah. works everywhere. You guys burning it all? Uh, rip wrap. I One mean, of my favorite it, techniques. It it works. You know, that's when I'm doing a seminar. People ask me what, where do you throw it? And I, I a lot of time I just tell them, you know, just throw it just like you would your spinner bait. You know, I mean, right, right here where we're fishing right now, it's clear water with um, a little bit of deep grass, and I'm just we're just going down the, going down the water or going down the bank throwing it, and I I've been throwing the three quarter ounce. I mean. Um, on like a highland reservoir, kind of like we're on right now, I, I really like that three quarter. It just gets it down in that water column a little bit deeper. How how do you? Uh, and I know Jocelyn, you she keeps pointing at me because she's got questions stacking up. But I want to ask my questions. The uh, <laughs> the uh, you, do you get into the three eighths? Uh, I, I know a lot of guys are like half ounce. That's all I use. I mean, do you get into three eighths and even? Uh, I know Jack Hammer doesn't make a quarter, but Z Man does. Do you do you get into those lighter weights? Yeah, I I mean down in Florida or at the Potomac or uh, Chesapeake, I will have a three eighths tied on. You know, mm -hmm. especially when that tide goes out and that water gets a little bit shallower, or if you're fishing way up a, a little creek arm or something like that. So, um, but most of the time, uh, day in and day out, a half ounce is probably my favorite. But depending on what what areas you fish, you know, if you're fishing uh, real grassy areas like in Florida or uh, up where you guys are at, uh, a three eighths is definitely tied on my rod. Yep, those those lightweights, I've definitely uh, found a place in my arsenal. Jocelyn, what do you got? We have a couple. So uh, T Nichols would like to know, Brett, how do you recommend setting the hook on a chatterbait? Good question. So, yeah, that is a very good question. So. Um, Obviously, most of the time I have my rod tip down, um, and and it's more of a, a side sweep hook set. Um, the worst thing that you can do is really uh, do like a worm hook set on on the bait. Uh, for some reason, it, it just I think that blade kind of pushes their mouth open. So uh, more of a winding side side sweep hook set is the best hook set for it. What else you got, Josh? Mr. Higgs would like to know, Brett, uh, will you fish the chatterbait for those deep early spawn bass even when the water is cold? How cold? How what, yeah. what's too cold for a chatterbait? 
you know, somewhere around that 48 degrees is probably where you're you're gonna not get as many bites and maybe like a, a flat side crankbait or something like that is probably gonna shine a little bit better. But, um, you know, 48, 50 degrees, they will bite it really, really well. And uh, that's that's when I start having confidence in it. I got a question about um, this sucker's tough to fish around wood. Yep. How are you? How are you dealing with that obstacle? The the faster you reel it, the less you get hung up. Mm. Don't slow it down at the wood. Speed it mm. up. Because mm -hmm. when you slow it down, then it wants to turn on its side, and that's when it gets hung up. So the, mm -hmm. when you come up to that wood, speed it up, and then you could kill it after you get past that wood. But, uh, yeah, that, that's my best, uh, best trick for that is to uh, speed it up. And, I mean, it, 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 your sense would think to, to slow it down, but really if you speed it up, it, it gets hung up less. Sure. Well, that made, that makes a lot of sense because it will roll. I mean, my gosh, it will roll and, and, uh, hang up on that wood. Have you, do you experiment with uh, any of the weedless versions or do you plan on having a weedless jackhammer at some point? I mean, there's always stuff in the works fellas, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but right, right now, uh, David Walker designed one with, uh, I mean, if you're fishing a lot of real heavy standing timber and stuff, um, Z-Man makes a, a cross-eyed uh, chatterbait. I love that bait. Yeah, that has those, uh, you know, it's like a 150-pound mono weed guard. You know, it's just two two strands of weed guard. And uh, that, that bait is really, really weedless around uh, brush and timber and stuff like that. Yep. Well, we, we did that. We actually did a show. We had Terry Scroggins on. And, yeah. you know, he's, he's like a tinkering, you know, master. Yeah. Yeah, he he drills he drills into the jackhammer and puts uh puts like um you know like just like you said uh glues in some mono, mono. yeah yep. hundred fifty pound strands of mono to make the jackhammer weedless. You guys can go back and check that episode out with Terry Scroggins. That was a couple years ago, Rich. Yeah, that was it. I think that was in twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. Yeah, yeah. But that's uh yeah go go check that out. Now you uh now you use the the it. Is it the Zaco or Zaco? Who am I? You're, you're, you must be saying it right. I've been saying it wrong all these years. Yeah, I've been saying Zaco forever. Yeah. But hey. yeah, it's the Zaco, which uh, stands for like little fish in Japanese. So oh, cool. uh, and kind of kind of comes back to the Japanese roots, the Yamamoto. So yeah, um, but we we designed that specifically for that bait. It fits it perfect. Um, yeah. It's just a. Uh, it has a really good profile and and really that's all i i really throw on that uh you know some guys like the paddle tail zako you know and usually um if i ever do throw the paddle tails when that water temperature warms up a little bit um and you want like kind of a bigger wiggle to the to the bait but the thing with the original zako the 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 jackhammer itself has so much action you don't want it to overpower it with uh, a trailer with a lot of action. So you want something that, you know, articulates kind of like that Zacco has uh, the segmented tail to it. So it really uh, kind of flows naturally and um, just looks natural in the water and looks like a, a bigger profile bait fish. So, it, and it's great bait. Uh, I love that trailer too. I know we started with, uh, I think the first trailer I was introduced to was the speed crawl. That was like, yeah, that was the double tail trailer that, that Thrift was using. Yep. Yeah. I mean, a lot of guys have caught, uh, caught fish on the speed crawl, you know, I mean, it, it, if, if I'm in a situation where I really think they're, they're biting a, a craw bait, Yamamoto just came out with the, the Yama craw, you know, it's kind of a kicking craw, but you can kind of switch that thing up, you know, that, that, uh, you know, depending on what trailer you put on it will depend on on how how high it runs in the water column if you put more of a kicking style trailer um like a yamakara or you know like what you were talking about it, it it's gonna it's gonna bring the bait up in the water column more do you feel like that the uh the the, the kicking style trailer like the crawl or whatever do you think that planes the bait off a little bit too like if you're fishing around wood like it'll prevent a little bit of the roll or um i 
I don't really know the the best answer for that, but um, I I just I know it, it those type of trailers bring the bait up in the water column. So if you're right. fishing uh, shallower grass or you know really trying to keep that bait up under docks or something like that, um, that kicking style bait definitely brings that bait closer to the surface. All right, what's what's something that we you're that we need to know what's a secret what's a what's a trick that uh that you're using out there that we might not know about throw it till your arm comes off uh. <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's really having confidence and finding mm -hmm. the right uh the right water to throw it in you know whether it's hydrilla or you know when those fish are up in that water column where where you can actually use that bait is um you know, it, it, it's just, just like anything else. I mean, it's a magical bait, but you still have to find the fish. Um, and when you find them, if, if they're in that mood that, uh, it, it's, it's hard to, hard to beat that bait. Have you, uh, have you ever uh -oh. called Littner wants to interject a little bit right here. No, <laughs> uh -oh. And then both Jordan and I have been learning a lot, but one thing, and I know Brett does this, um, and uh -oh. it's probably a secret. Not. So, but I've caught a lot of fish, you know, at Clear Lake, for example, and some of those lakes back in California, California where I used to live, that lifting technique yep. with, a, with a, you know, a rattling bait, like a Jackal TN70 or regular rattle trap, you know, that yo-yo like yo kind of thing. That same deal with the jackhammer, I've caught a lot of bass doing that. So, like, if you buzz through this area right here and you catch a couple, but you see more on your pen optics or what have you, sitting out there a little deeper where that bait's not getting down to that's where that like three quarter and that ounce and a quarter i mean i've jacked them on that jordan's got another one i'm over here cheapers crap but anyway <laughs> that 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 lifting technique or the yo-yo technique with that bait is i mean if you're around the right group of fish the right habitat meaning some deep grass or even a shell bar or something like that it doesn't hurt to at least, you know, make a few throws with that and, and see if that triggers some extra bites. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, and I, I completely agree with, with Jared. That that ounce and a quarter is um, in that three quarters really where that yo-yo effect really works good. And um, a good, good tip for guys yo-yoing, I would rather pull it instead of pulling it up like you would a worm, kind of pull it horizontally the rod because you're in a better position to set the hook than you are when you're pulling it up so high um a lot of time you know that they'll get it either on the fall or when you're pulling it up and then you're out of position to set that hook um sideways um you know that sweeping hook set i was talking about earlier so i like to kind of pull it to the side and you'll feel it you know thump and then let it fall back to the bottom and then you'll feel it thump let it fall back to the bottom we call it the zip zip yeah zip zip <laughs> yeah, we don't Pete. We, that doesn't work around here <laughs> <laughs> we we yep yeah, we love that we love jared uh stepping in great to yeah. great to see jared Littner. we've got a, a bunch of great content is from jared as well over at bashy.tv make sure you guys go and check that out have you ever ca caught them on a chatterbait where you're like, this is not chatterbait water. This should not happen. And, uh, and, and it turns out to be the deal. Yeah. I mean, uh, when, it, when I first really got introduced to the, to the chatterbait, I w went to Lake Mead and I mean, I, Pete, you've been there. I mean, you can see clear. 20, 20, 25 feet deep and, uh, you get a little breeze blowing. And I was like, you know, I'll pick that thing up, you know, just over shallow points. And, I mean, just absolutely slaying them on the thing. And it, I mean, it, it will work. I mean, if, like I said, if those fish are up in that water column, um, <laughs> the bass love that thing. And I mean, you can, like I said, you can always switch up to that little bit smaller trailer, like the three inch Zocco, just to kind of match the hatch a little bit or, or how big the fish are in your area um, to, to get them to bite it. it it's surprising. I, I get, to, I'll tell you uh, a, a the, the situation that happened to me, like fishing in Chesapeake, I use, I often use a, a long trailer when there's herring around. I want sure. that, you know, I use a six inch uh, trailer, a, a skinny dipper a lot of times when I see them around. And uh, the, um, 
So I, I got to go up to Lake Champlain, uh, but all my rods are rigged from the Chesapeake. And, and I've got a uh, back in the day, I braided line with uh, a half ounce chatterbait with the six inch trailer. And I'm fishing uh, jerk baits off of a long point for smallmouth and uh, catching them pretty good. But the bite went away. We couldn't drop shot and we couldn't get them. And uh, the guy I was with, you know, says, you care if I throw the chatterbait? And I'm like, man, this is not the right tool for the job you can go ahead and throw it but <laughs> we're, we're in 20 25 feet of water just like you said and a braided line a big giant trailer i cannot tell you how many four pound smallmouth came up into the first foot of the water column to smash that thing and <laughs> at the time i'm like i didn't even know a smallmouth would hit a chatterbait but they absolutely tear it up yeah smallmouth really like that chatterbait i mean when i'm when i'm in, up north fishing those smallmouth lakes. I Most of the time I have that three quarter ounce green pumpkin with green pumpkin Zocco trailer. And uh, you know, what's nice is you can burn it real fast, just like smallmouth like, mm -hmm. or you can cast it out, let it go to the bottom and slow roll it too. But it's uh, <laughs> small. I've caught a lot of, a lot of big smallmouth on, uh, on the chatterbait or on the jackhammer. Yeah, I, I was shocked. I had no idea. I thought there's no way this is a smallmouth bait. And I've I've been super successful in, in river systems in particular where there's smallmouth uh, and any kind of stain. It's really effective, but uh, found it effective in other places, too. Jocelyn, what do you got? Logan wants to know, does flipping a swim bait trailer upside down really improve the action? Good question. Flipping the swim bait trailer upside down. So you're talk, talking about the trailer on a on a on a chatterbait, I'm assuming. Yeah. Uh, flipping you know, it upside do you, do you, down. I um I don't flip it upside down. I mean it the way it's designed, I mean it you can I I, I just rig it regular. Um maybe somebody taught me something. I, I might try that later today. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that where like especially the paddle tail trailers, guys experiment sure. with flipping them upside down. And it uh it it maybe dives it deeper, keeps it shallower, depending. Uh, I haven't uh, what yeah, do you got, Rich? That, there's there's that some of that erratic. going on 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 the Chesapeake, the, the uh, uh -oh. the upside down swim bait deal. But it, it's more of a because with the, with the paddle tail swim bait, it makes it want to lift up some and it kills some of the action of the bait. Where if you flip the paddle tail upside down, it doesn't make the bait lift as much. You can still get that same kicking action it actually hey, my, my buddy jordan here he's got some experience with that so i'm gonna let him talk a little let's bit. let's hear it you nailed it to a t so when you rig the paddle tail normal the the tail wants to kind of ride up so it's in line with the the blades chattering like this and the tail rides up and when you flip that swim bait upside down it stays more horizontal and it has more of a especially if you're slow rolling it it's more of a natural it kind of stays uh like in plane so you nailed it yeah. yeah, that's See? just what we need to give B height more tips on how to fish a chatterbait. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> put that one in the bank. <laughs> uh, well, that's great stuff, man. And um, and and you 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 know you broke the mold with this thing. Everybody's throwing a jackhammer, and congratulations on that. And I imagine that's your retirement fund. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, we had no idea when you know, like I said, we we're just trying to make a better mousetrap and. Um, ended up making one of the most uh, best tournament baits or best baits ever ever made. I mean, uh, arguably, I mean, uh, there was two classics, one back to back, Red Crest. I mean, it, it's it's won millions of dollars, and uh, it, it's uh, it, it's really gratifying to me is when I meet somebody that come up to me at a gas station, and told me they caught their biggest fish they've ever caught on the jackhammer and. Um, just hearing all the great stories about it is is really pretty cool, man. Well, that's that's tremendous, and I I had this written down. And I forgot to ask you: are, Is there other than the trailer? Is there any modifications you do for any situation, or is it always out of the pack? Just right out of the pack. I mean, it. Everybody thinks I got a bunch of you know like <laughs> laser aligned ones or something. You know? <laughs> like, I just rip them out of the pack, put them in the box put a Zocco trailer on there, tie it on and start casting the thing. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's good right out of the pack. You don't have to do anything. So, um, like I said, it, it, we didn't realize what, what, uh, what we were doing. We were just trying to make a better chatterbait and it, and it ended up being, uh, the best one ever made. 
Man, one one of the marquee baits that has been ever made. I give you, I will give you that. That is a big deal, and um and congratulations on hey, that, B. But uh, hey, hey Pete, we're uh, Chatterbait is going to send you some Chatterbait water wings that you have to wear next time you're in the water. Uh, got the Chatterbait logo on them. I mean, it, 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 you're you're going to look sexy wearing them. Okay. Yeah. And, and you guys come see me at the Bassmaster Classic at the Evergreen International booth. We have a new, uh, I guess I'm letting the cat out of the bag a little bit, a new rod that uh, some guys might be interested in. So uh, I can't let the cat out of the bag fully, but uh, this uh, this thing is pretty pretty sick. So uh, come see me and check it out. Well, we will definitely we'll be there. We'll, we'll come see you and I'll come by to get my water wings. I promise to wear them if I when if I make a cut this year. I promise I will make <laughs> I, will, I will wear them that for sure. Tough. I need them honestly. You know, uh, <laughs> I've got floating glasses from Hobie now. I've got floating rod covers, uh, so I definitely need the water wings. Floating. Hey, hey, and these are Coast Guard approved water wings. So I mean, <laughs> you're you're good. You know, I mean. <laughs> Uh, it's like a life vest on all the time. <laughs> I love it. Hey, you, we were talking about this. I just want to get you to comment on this. You, uh, MLF has switched over to five fish. Uh, we had one of the most spectacular finishes ever, uh, you know, with the five fish limit at Toho and, uh, or, you know, five best counting. Uh, how do you feel about that? Do you, do you like uh, the five fish deal? Yeah, I think it turned out really, really well. You know, it's... Uh, it's it's uh everybody can kind of relate to it i mean we were always catching five big ones but uh at the bottom line when it would show 70 or 80 pounds it, it kind of gets um overtaken by by the, the the total weight so um and and obviously just like you said we saw a lot of drama in the last few minutes andy morgan on uh, the knockout round day was right. 30 seconds left caught like a six four to to, to bump Jacob Wheeler out of 10th. So, I mean, uh, it, it's it's pretty cool. And, you know, I got to give a shout out to my buddy, Chris Lane. Um, Jared and I were actually at his house watching the whole thing. And we were just, I mean, it was it was classic Chris Lane. I mean, just had no idea that he won the tournament. <laughs> and uh, and it was just, just the reaction was, was priceless. I mean, it, it's one of those fish catches that uh, nobody's ever going to forget. It, it, it was just absolutely spectacular, and he's talking us through it. I think my best chance to get it and, – and the other one. Oh, my gosh. The other fish catch with his backlash. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, this, this, hap this is going to happen all the time. This happens all the time. Don't worry, guys. And it, it'll happen. And he hand lines a five-and-a-half-pounder in. You know, it's just like when – Come you on. you know, Pete, you won plenty of tournaments. I mean, when it's your time, it's your time. You can't yeah. can't do anything wrong. And I mean, Mark Mark Davis, what an awesome performance on that knockout oh, round. And I mean, it, it's just uh, it it was a really good tournament. I think uh, it's really gonna. Um, obviously, we had a we have a great fan base at Major League Fishing, but I I think it's really gonna relate to the the weekend tournament angler a little bit better for us. Well, it was great. Cause, yes. And Mark Davis was amazing. Uh, nobody can outslow Mark Davis. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You don't want to fish behind Mark Davis. I can tell you, he caught everything around there. <laughs> yeah, he did. He just, he, he could count the stalks on those, <laughs> uh, on those lily pad vines. And, and, and that was amazing to see. And, oh my gosh, it was so amazing to, to watch I thought he was going to win. There's no way anybody was going to catch him. 34-10. Uh, what a monster bag. Yeah. You know? Had a 10-pound lead over Chris. And, uh, you know, Chris just had a heck of a, I think, three days in a row. I mean, and just, you know, knowing what to do and, you know, just never giving up. He, he really, really, uh, really put on a good performance, both those guys. And it, he really did. By the way, we're going to have Chris on the show next week. Um, and we're going to talk to him about uh, uh, his ba his backlash tips and techniques. Cause yeah, yeah, that, <laughs> that'll be good. You, you always carry a glove in your pocket for hand lining. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what, you know what freaks me out about that is there were so much knots and and so many breaking points 
on that line that could have gone south. Oh, yeah. Didn't. Yep. That's when it's your day. You know, you know how it is when it's your day. It, yep. It was his day. That was, that was great fish catch. And, uh, Hey man, thanks so much. We, you know what we got to get B is we got to get with you. Maybe, uh, are you going to be at, the, you're going to be at the classic this year, right? Yep. Yep. I will be there. I'll be at Red Crest and the classic. Well, we, we'd, uh, I'd, I'd love to get you back at Bashy. We haven't had you speak for us, uh, for too long honestly and uh maybe we can meet up at icast or the classic uh we'll reach out to you and see if we can get connected that sounds good guys i appreciate you having me on say bye to Littner. Get see, him up. see yep. you guys hey, Boy, hey, say, if you guys get... we all contributed today what's that we all contributed today and some That's good right. talk that but, uh, yeah, Jordan, Jordan's up and coming Western uh, anglers from California. And uh, like I said, he's fishing uh, Tack Warehouse Invitational. And he's had some rookie bad bad luck lately, but uh, we're trying to get him through that. We're not letting him touch anything on the boat. We're just, uh, he's just riding along casting today. We told him, you, you just sit here, don't touch anything, just cast. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, you guys catch another fish. I want a group picture. We want to put that out on social. So okay. uh, I'll send it to you guys. Yep. Get get a big one for us, man. We're jealous. We're stuck in the studio, but it's awesome to have you guys with us. Thanks to all three yep. of you. And uh, we'll catch up with you real soon. All right. See you guys. Thank all you. All right. Thank See you guys. B Height, Jared Litner, Litner, and Jordan. What's Jordan's last name? I didn't the catch his last Jordan. name. Jordan the rookie. Jordan Jordan. Jordan. Jordan the rookie Michael, out on the uh, Jordan here. out on the invitational tour. We'll get to know Jordan. That was great because he dialed right in on the uh, trailer. He knew exactly yeah. uh, what our subscriber great was talking question, about. Logan. Yeah, it was. He knew exactly what Logan was talking about. So great stuff. Where hey guys, That's like awesome. and share the feed on social. Uh, we're going to be giving away some Waterwood baits, and we have a great trivia uh, contest coming up where we're going to be giving away prizes. We're going to take a quick break and then we're going to come back and give you give away some stuff so we'll be right back after this what's going on it's riz here from the bash university and i am excited to welcome in waterwood custom baits to the bashu family these are custom handmade baits in the south rainforest of brazil they're made of marupa pedra wood it's extremely dense it's resistant but it's also really buoyant they're made of quality components with a 100% guarantee, they're made for tournament anglers to get it done when the money is on the line. Guys, that was like my second cast with this bait. That's a Waterwood custom bait. These things are handmade in the rainforest south of Brazil. And I mean, as you can see right here, it's a fish catching bait. It's got the front hook. That means they wanted it. This bait's, uh, it, it's running really true. It throws really well. Guys, check them out at waterwoodcustombaits.com. underwater viewing technology. Find what you are looking for. Catch more fish. Have more fun. Aquaview. Seeing is believing. Why do you love catching fish and rods? I'm truly losing less fish. Is the sensitivity of the rod. That are made right here in North Carolina in the USA. Strongest, lightest rod. 100% made here in Sanford, North Carolina. From the drop shot rod to the flipping stick. Every rod has a purpose to it, and I rely on them all the time when I'm out doing a tournament. Durability in the John Cruz Worming series, the counterbalancing in the handle. It's the only rod I found that can withstand my hooks. Boom goes the dynamite.
effect on the water not spent fishing is a moment wasted. That's why Minn Kota and Humminbird have joined forces to bring you the One Boat Network. Products that communicate and integrate to help you take full command of your boat. Born from our commitment to making the most advanced fishing gear even better by making it work together. The One Boat Network will help you find, get to, stay on, and catch more fish. When One Boat Network products talk to each other, they can navigate your boat automatically. They can give you a crystal clear view of what's below with no messy wires. And they can let you lower, raise, and change shallow water anchor modes from anywhere on the boat. But that's just the beginning. We're never done innovating, integrating, and making your boat simpler and easier to control. All so you can make every second on the water count. Well, <laughs> I'm getting really bad at my cues these days, guys. Welcome back. I, I even gave you the 10 second mark at like 17 seconds. I did hear that. Yes. We need to compile all of those together. Yeah, not, yeah. Ready. not ready. Perfect. Get cut the first 10 seconds of every show. Every yeah, that, that's that's. Uh, well, I'm glad I have you guys to to do your best. I snap, appreciate snap, it. Snap. Keep keep me in check, guys. Like and share the feed on social. It's your last chance. We're going to be giving away some uh, Waterwood baits, so like and share that feed, and uh, we'll give that away here shortly. And we have a trivia question. Rich, are you ready? I'm ready, man. You, I, am, I am ready. Why don't you go ahead and, and rip that question out? See, see who was paying attention. Yeah, right. See a lot of, lot of great information uh, disseminated during that, that seminar. One of the greatest uh, baits in the history of the world. And the, one of the guys that uh, that revolutionized it. So uh, great, great I hour of chatterbait talk. I literally took two pages of notes. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yes. One it was on oh, one man. on Facebook said, "Slow down. I'm trying to take so many notes. I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't write fast enough." Yeah. <laughs> uh, the the one takeaway, and 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 I knew this, and I got to hear it more and more and more, was lock that rod in your hand. You know that's. That's the the juice, really, because this bait will catch them. Is you just lock that rod in your hand, and you'll get it done. All right. Well, the question for the grand prize is going to be: Before Brett Height was throwing a Z-Man jackhammer, or before he was even throwing a Z-Man bait, what was the brand of chatter bait he was throwing? What was the that, original brand chatter bait that Brett Height was that, throwing that influenced that jackhammer? Oh, we already got a winner. Wow. Oh, good lord. How, how is that even possible? There's supposed to be delay on the show. Is this guy in the studio with us, Chad? Chad, are you, are you, where are you, Chad? Chad. <laughs> were the mics hot, Rich, <laughs> during break? I don't think they were. No. That's funny. Great. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Hey, who won that? Wow. Chad, Chad. With Phoenix. Chad with Phoenix. Yeah. Phoenix I, I, I remember that whole thing went down with the, with the Phoenix and, and everybody was, you know, that was changing things. The guys that were, doing well in the tournaments were using that bait and then it got involved with uh the the patent at z-man z-man said no no deal boys you can't you can't do that and and that's how this whole thing came about turned out to make uh the premier uh vibrating jig on the planet so it all worked out for the best and great uh great answer <laughs> But what do you got over there, Josh? Incredible. I'm just laughing at how fast that was. I asked how fast it was. How, how can you answer so <laughs> fast? All right. It was before I even finished the question. He was typing. <laughs> <laughs> typing. Donald. Yeah. Well, um, guy, when when is when is the next elite uh tournament that you will be at, Rich? Sabine. The Sabine River. Sabine. Okay. I believe. Well, the Sabine is for sure. Yep. Uh, but we'll all be at the Bassmaster Classic. So if yeah, anybody's the next. Around, it's road trip time. That is the next. Anybody's around Knoxville. Yes. Come see us. It's going to be a good expo. Yeah, that for sure. Uh, we'll be down there. Um, and come by and see us if you're a subscriber. Make sure you come by and see us. We'll have something for you. And uh, yeah, we'll... one of my favorite things about the classic is when subscribers do come by. Like we met Holly and Dennis, and yeah. they did a nice interview. And that's right. It, yeah. It's just really cool seeing and hearing subscribers that have been with us for so long and how it's Good helped stuff. them and uh, i can't tell you how many times and this is great uh it it means so much to me because you put so much into this program to design to help people catch fish and 
gain, help them build confidence. And when they track you down and uh, one, one that I remind, I'm reminded of in the last class, he was a father who knows nothing about fishing. He's a mm-hmm. golfer. Um, but his son got so passionate about the sport and he didn't know where to go, where to turn, how to help him. And he's so appreciative of Bash University that enabled him to be able to help his help him and his son both learn how to fish, learn how to be more confident and consistent. Uh, those stories are priceless. So make sure you stop by and see us. We love to to see all you guys and how you're using the program. So many. We have people that are just starting in fishing. We have people that are aspiring pros. And we have the top level anglers in the elite and the MLF, both using the product, all using the product to to improve, to get better. And that's what that's what we do at Bashu TV. We have amazing uh, content that is released all the time. We have two new pieces of content a week. As I'm scrambling to look, what is being released this week? Do you do you know off the top of your head, Rich? I don't. I don't know off the top of my head, unfortunately, right now. But I can definitely pull it up. And while he's doing that, it's also good to let these guys know that we do some seminars at the Classic. So. You swing by our booth, Mm -hmm. we we could be doing a seminar. Yep. I'm looking at it right now, and these seminars are are two amazing ones that you really, man, I just look at all of our new releases uh, this this week and last. Punching uh, with uh, Brandon Lester. Now, we we saw punching uh, play a huge role in uh, one of the rookies in the elite tournament. Logan Latuso. Yes. He, uh, he, He picked up his punching. A rod and did extremely well call like a seven and a five back to back brandon lester is just coming on he's uh projected to be one of the angler of the year contenders geez every year Again. and uh and you want to definitely check that out one and this is one our own gdp uh we filmed and it's using topwaters during the spawn this is an on water seminar and it you know, a lot of people don't think about it, uh, top waters during the spawn, but we saw uh, Steve Kennedy Steve do Kennedy it with the it. frog, yeah. pulling those fish up out of the spawning position to, to get them to strike, to defend their nest with a top water frog. Well, GDP does it a lot with a buzz bait and prop baits uh, to pull these fish up off the spawning beds and catch fish that you can't see, but you know are spawning. Really uh, insightful helpful footage that you're definitely going to want to go check out not to mention uh the spoon master with brian thrift that was one of our most popular seminars this year uh so that's just a couple of them you can go see all of our releases at bashy.tv and try it for 30 days for free seeing red promotion is hot we're going to be back next week with chris lane uh talking about the, the the greatest fish catch in the history of the world uh live during during the tournament, what else? We have we a like and share winner. We have a like and share winner. Congratulations, Matthew Keebler. Keeble, you won. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for watching over there, wherever you're watching YouTube, Facebook, over at Bashu.tv, or you're on our podcast. Uh, if you if you aren't aware of that, all of our stuff is available for download um, on your pot and wherever you get your podcast. So go check that out and download the free Bashu app. Guys, thanks for watching. I'm Pete Kluzak. We will see you next week.